Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, and I'm broadcasting, as I always do, from Nashville, Tennessee. I've returned back to the peaceful lake here after my horrible, horrible victory in Humble Start with my brick wool, and I am gonna see, I realize now, if there is supposedly wool everywhere except for Humble Start and uh, the Caves of Confusion, then that means that there must be wool left undiscovered somewhere in this labyrinth. Or I'm on another wild goose chase, and I will very likely be very, very angry, and uh, possibly not even post this video. So if you're still watching this, that means either I succeeded or I failed so quickly that it was not even worth editing now. Okay, well that's interesting. We seem to have spawners underneath the stone. I'm just kind of digging around, like, in general here, to try and see if I can find anything that was uh, significantly different from what I explored the first time around. And under that stone, we have sandstone. Huh. So, nothing too exciting in here. But, it's still something slightly new, slightly different. Yep. Just monster spawners in darkness. That has been fixed with lots of light stone. Or glowstone. Okay. So, no secret hidden chest under that. Let's see. Uh, these hallways, I believe I fully explored, but in the sake of, uh, for the sake of, you know, completionness, I feel obliged to at least verify. Ah! I feel obliged to verify that, uh, that there's no wool underneath any of this. Oh. Okay, well, I had heard about that glitch where occasionally when you remove blocks near spawners, the lighting might not update as quickly as the block removal does, making it a uh, invalid spawn location. So even that was fully lit, uh, I had a creature spawn atop me. Uh. Woo, I, I gotta try not to yell too much. It's getting kind of late at night. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm thinking what I might want to do is go down there. So using the newfound iron technology I have, I can just use that nice little water pillar I've created to explore. Wow, this is quite the cavern. So I'll just descend a little bit lower. And move, maybe stick my head out a little bit, but this is quite deep. So I'll just start throwing down some glowstone. So I've got a good, oh wow. That seems to go on forever in that direction. And pretty far in that direction too. And that way as well. Okay, well. Whoops, took some fall damage there. This all seems to be obsidian. So, you know, that'd be good if I had a, a present desire to mine tons of obsidian, which I do not. So, let's see what else is here. Got some, ooh, iron vein. Another iron vein. Coal vein. Like that Kurt fellow. Whoa, whoops. More coal down here. I've been surprisingly unattacked by anything so far, which I'm not sure how far my luck will hold on that. What I'm assuming is there's some nearby area where they are spawning in mass and uh, possibly above me and just waiting to fall on me. So, you know, there's a nice little ceiling I created for myself. Okay, well, 
Huh. It's hard to say exactly what's around here, but I do know that I want to light that up if I can. Ooh. Well, there's some more fall damage for you. So, I figure since this area here seems basically secure, I might go ahead and grab some coal real quick and a little bit of iron. I'm not really sure the order in which I'm going to explore the rest of the map. I do know there was an area off the western commons that I have not yet really seen. I got as far as the sign, read the sign aloud, and ran away because I was super low on health and didn't really have uh, much of a plan, if any. But, you know, that's one of them things where uh, it's not a great video if I have no way to light anything up and I die immediately. And... So, you know what, I'll speed things up a little bit here with this nice iron pick that I picked up earlier, or created actually, earlier, using this very mine. So let's see, got plenty of coal to hold me over for the time being. So let me think, what else happened while I was on a vacation? Well, in addition to the deep sea fishing, uh, I got to go to the Naval Aviation History Museum, or Naval Aviation Museum of History, or Museum of something. I think it was N-A-M-S was their abbreviation, so I really wonder what the S is. Naval Aviation Museum something. Okay, well, I'll figure that out later. That That's what the internet's for, you know. But anyway, so I got to go there. And I got to see some neat things, like they had a remote control plane from World War II that was essentially like the predecessor of the smart bomb, where the plane had no pilot, and uh, it had a camera in its nose, and a pilot would sit in another plane within radio range and watch the television pictures coming from the drone, if you will and remote control and fly it into caves or wherever uh, the Japanese bases were. And uh, while the technology was logically there, if you asked me, hey, did they have television pictures back in World War II? I would have said, yeah, sure, of course they did. They had that technology, they had cameras. Did they have radio to remote control things? Yeah, of course they did. But I had no knowledge of any such a program. Uh, it just hadn't come up, I guess, in my learning. but. I thought it was pretty neat that there was such a thing. Uh, the drone in question was called the Edna 3, and uh, the docent, I believe is the term for the museum, like person that stands near the thing and makes sure nobody touches it, actually was an engineer involved with the program. And uh, he was saying that at the time uh, it was super secret and he could write his family uh, about every three months just to say, uh, only that he was okay, and but not what he was working on or anything like that. But that's often the way with military technology, I guess. Um, I thought that was just kind of neat, though, because we had this drone capability, apparently, you know, as early as the 40s, but we uh, kind of didn't really do much with it past that, which, if I had to guess, would probably be uh, decisions that was made by the aviators in command of the uh, aviation stuff just because they believe, you know, pilots are the be-all, end-all. And I mean, you know, manned piloting is really important and uh, especially in terms of, like the space program. You know, I think going unmanned is really, oh no, there's a spider spawner down there. That's, that's a part of that problem where I said stuff was waiting for me. Okay. Well, 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 okay, okay, uh, okay, I gotta get out of range of the spawner, and I gotta kill the spiders that are stopping my escape as well, and I didn't really, uh, am I out of range of the spawner at least now? Okay. Well, so it seems that this mine has multiple levels, and the more greedily and deep that you dig, the greater the imminent danger. I mean, I still got a decent amount of health, but 
hey, I got me 38 blocks of iron, which is uh, nearly 13 buckets or a decent amount of armor, and uh, so no need to push too far at this point, especially when this is just technically supposed to be a resupply run and not anything too fancy. But, well, all that obsidian does look pretty with the extra glowstone there, so I do enjoy that. Well, you know what I just realized, y'all? I've got over nine iron ingots. And I can take them iron ingots, and I can create a block of iron. And with that block of iron, I can go back to the victory monument and claim a victory token thing. What do you call it? I can call this one a win. Even though I did not come here seeking a victory block after my many, many failures, achieving a victory block in the humble start and in Peaceful Lake, I have inadvertently somehow won. I have achieved triumph. And I think that there's a lesson here where... When you're trying to do something with a concrete goal, sometimes uh, if the goal is too specific, you won't necessarily achieve that goal, you know? Whoops, I uh, got rid of that minecart way too early. I thought that, that was the end. Well, see, so that's my point. Sometimes you interfere with things and it ain't time to interfere with them or you set goals for yourself that are way too lofty and uh, or unrealistic. And you don't achieve what you're intending to. But then when you just do something you enjoy, like coming out here and riding a train and digging up iron, you may find that you have inadvertently achieved your goal. And so having done that, I'm just going to take this block of iron all the way back to the Victory Monument and call this one a win. And here I am, back at the home of victory. So I'm just going to not hit that tree when I jump there. Ta-da! I'm quite the talented fella. So, up the little makeshift stairwell here. And let me grab a sign real quick. And I was going to get a torch, but I seem to have forgotten mine. So let's see here. Red wool, black wool, iron block. There we go. And put up a little sign here that says some letters of something, something, a uh, mining outpost or something. So we'll just, uh, I think it was something like Kinnum of R O. The uh, blah 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 blah. I'll know what that means later. And because I don't have any torches, I'm just gonna put that block there. Ta da! Now I just need to get a whole bunch of wool and some gold and some diamond, and I'll have completed the monument. So, yeah, look at that. That's coming along.